Hi, this is Lee, and this is a video about Devil May Cry The Bloody Palace. Not a video game, the board game, as was officially licensed by Capcom and made by Steamforge Games. And it was Kickstarter last year, uh, somewhere between May, I believe, let's say, uh, yep, from May 15th to May 22nd. It was only a short camping, seven days, no add-on, no whatsoever, no stretch goals, so it was quite straightforward. And if you didn't know about Steamforge games, they made quite a lot of games from Dark Souls, uh, Resident Evil 2, God Tier, Critical Role Miniatures, Horizon Zero Dawn, Bloody Palace, and then the latest Resident Evil 3. Not the latest, the latest one, the Bard Sun, still ongoing, but the one before uh, was Resident Evil 3. So they made quite a lot of games, and it has quite some reputation, not in a good way, actually. Uh, they basically, they messed up Dark Souls fulfillment, um, and then the game turns out not to be amazing. And then before the fulfillment all finished, they kickstarted Resident Evil 2, which is an alright game, but the gaming components, miniatures, boards, the cars are just not as good as, you know, regular board games. And so it was just not, you know, very, you know, recommended by the people because God, it's Steamforge games, they made Dark Souls and it was horrible, stay away from Steamforge games. So a lot of people have been saying that, but I didn't have any issue with, uh, with the uh, Steamforge games, and I am a huge fan of Devil May Cry series. So I backed this campaign like no-brainer, to be honest, and I backed multiple copies, I did. Um, even with all those you know, negativity of Steamforge games, I backed multiple copies. Um, they did actually post a lot of blogs on their website before the Kickstarter campaign, Started. I think it was somewhere middle of April, and then they updated every single uh, character's you know feature, the decks, how how the game mechanism works, how enemy works, how you know how the miniature looks like, what's the contents of the entire Kickstarter. They made quite a lot of stuff, and I've been follow all that update you know right before the Kickstarter started. I can probably tell I know a lot before I backed it. Uh, the game is currently. Uh, on retail already, they, you can you can get everything on their website, even the Kickstarter exclusive expansion, the Devil Trigger. Uh, well, you know, Kickstarter exclusive, uh, it's not that really that exclusive, but th those are the leftovers from their production copies, so uh, I've been told it's limited quantity, but anyway, it's currently 94.99 uh, pounds on their website as the uh, retail price. Um, it's quite a lot compared to the Kickstarter, obviously, but I do believe it's it's all right for a you know huge board game with tons of miniatures and surprisingly good. The game is actually surprisingly good. Uh, the Kickstarter camping page still up there. You can have a look if you want. Um, but again, you can't get the Kickstarter prize anyway. Uh, so let's just get right into the unboxing bit. Uh, so that's a core game. Uh, was the front and that was the side. And I believe the upside and downside are the same as feature Nichols' van, and uh, I believe that's the uh, beginning cutscene of the DMC5. The backside, it's the overview of the entire game. You get tons of miniatures, and then the whole setup. You have, you know, your, your character sheet, and then the character board, actually, and the combo cards, and all the miniatures on the boards. Uh, it's everything there. So it's a competitive game. It's not the dungeon crawler, it's a competitive game, and up to four players, and you can solo it. And open the box right there as a cover sheet, uh, feature the neon light of the van, the Devil May Cry. Uh, I think it's really sweet. I mean, uh, I think quite a lot of board games they don't have anything in their you know you know this this section. Uh, you can just put it there, and then it's quite a nice I don't know decoration there. And that's the rule book. Uh, I believe you can download the rule book on their website. So I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna talk anything about rule book. It's nothing there. And then there is the board. The board is uh, quite big, I believe. Not 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 that big, kind of standard size, but big enough. And so you get the main uh, board as the Bloody Palace, and I believe that's only the, the the stage one of the Bloody Palace. It evolves during the video game. But anyway, that's the thickness of the board. It's not all right, not not too thick, not too thin. It's all right quality. And then when you let's when you open it so that that's the size of it I can't really fit into my camera but uh, you get the idea that's the entire board and you got those uh, 
stylish points track on the side of it from D to C to B A S S S smoking sexy style triple S. That's uh, a hundred points in total, I believe. Um, yeah, that's seventy five on triple S, and then hundreds if you go all the way around to the zero. Uh, it's nice. Uh, the the print quality is much better than Resident Evil Two. All right, and um, this is a token, token stuff. Uh, they did uh, a nice icon illustration on every single characters and enemies. So we get uh, a logo for every everyone, and then those uh, tokens are double printed, uh, double sided. So you get red orbs on the side and then green orbs on the other side. Those numbers are damage tokens, and then the again the the character tokens are double sided as well. Uh, one side you get the three uh, D render of the uh, characters, and the other side it's their logo. Logos are really nicely done, to be honest. The, the design was really nice. So V you can have shadows, clouds, and then uh, Griffin's feather, and then uh, Trish you get this umbra and loose the, the gu double guns, and then the lightning logo in. Uh, lighting the logo right in front and then Dante you got Rebellion the skull head in the middle and then Ebony and Ivory's initial on both sides featured the black color and then the white color and Nero you got this uh, top side of the Red Queen with his new Devil Breaker I think that's Overture I believe uh, it was really nice done the artwork uh, but we'll get to the artwork later um, and then the one in the middle, that's the uh, first player token. I was gonna actually say about it. It's, uh, I mean, it's a cool wing logo. Why don't why why would you ch cut it like like a heart? It's kind of annoying me. But anyway, that's not the point. Uh, let's put the tokens aside. That's the hunter's board. Uh, they made it into the actual thick board, not not you know, thin cards. So that's not that's nice. Uh, that's where the reference card and that's the uh, brief of your turn you can move you can attack that's the deck and discard pile and that's the basic attack zone and your combo chain zone that's really nice shame they didn't print anything on the back side it's just black it would be nice if you have a logo on the side and then it's just tons of miniatures i gotta say it's from steamforge games and the miniature quality is surprisingly good considering they did quite bad in resident evil 2 i keep saying this but anyway the details are really good, but again, their scale is slightly bigger. Uh, it's not standard 32 millimeter scales. It's more like 35 to 40. Uh, they are the same size as Kingdom Death miniatures. Kingdom Night, Kingdom Side, uh, Kingdom Death, Kingdom Death is 32 millimeters, I believe, but they are kind of somehow just huge, bigger. Uh, they are they are bigger than regular zombie side miniatures, and they're the same scale as Kingdom Death. I'll get to the detail of the miniatures in later this video. This is then long video, and uh, that's V. I got Griffin on his arm there. Uh, I think it's a bit weird to put Griffin right next to the head because I do believe your you know if you have a you know a, a, a any bird they, they would stay on your you know near the hand size side but not 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 next to the head but i do believe it's just easier to you know making the mold and that's nero right there details really good i'm gonna say this again details really good and then trish but not every single miniatures has perfect quality uh, perfect details some of them are you know kind of blurred out i'll get to this later this video uh just Tons of impulsa, I believe that's 12 impulsas there. And they didn't bother make red impulsa outer scalp, so they are either all impulsa on the board or all red impulsas on the board. So you, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, I do need to point out one thing uh, as uh, if you are, you know, get you, you're buying this game, be careful when you're opening the core game uh, because uh, I believe uh, both my and also the the unboxing video from dice tower uh they also had this uh elder Jean knight's head off i also have the uh the the horns of the how the the how the horse off as well and uh, was somewhere hidden in the box i trying to i managed to glue it back but uh, just be careful and uh, uh, the the insert of this game is i'm not gonna say 
really bad, but definitely not great. And again, the miniature quality, the details, all of there, it's really sharp. Uh, I do believe they changed the uh, plastic materials compared to the previous games. And then they also have all those base made in ABS. It's a hard plastic. You don't really get, you know, bent in transition. And also it's just better plastic. And that's the Impusa Queen. To be honest, I was, I was not amazed during the time they post the production copies image on Kickstarter. But then when I actually have it in my hand, damn the details, it's just amazing, all right? It, the, the production photos they, they post on Kickstarter was all right. I mean, it looks nice, not not too bad, and it looks all right. But then when I actually have it in my hand, all those details, all those textures of this, all on the, uh, it's just amazing miniatures, amazing miniatures. Uh, again, I'll get the details of the miniature uh, later in this video. This is just to show off a little bit. And that's real, I believe. That's the giant lizards. Regular giant lizards. There's a fancy one called Fury, I believe. All right, so this game is, uh, you know, the, it's it's a card game, actually. Uh, you, you spend quite a lot of time on cards more than miniatures. It's a card game. You got tons of cards. So you got uh enemies ai deck the behavior deck so i believe each enemy have seven i think some one or two of them have fewer six and impulse have four uh, impulse and red impulse they have four cards in their behavior deck behavior deck and this is a achievement deck uh, so basically in each stage uh, each level you will have this uh, specific number of achievement you can claim so if you get the requirements, you get to claim the achievement, then you get boost the points at the end of the game. Um, so like this one, you can claim it if you dodge at least four damage from an enemy's attack, and this is gonna reward you two points at the end of the game. Um, so the, the the game is a strategy a competitive game. So you are not you play if you're playing multiplayer's. Uh, game, you're not fighting together to be honest. You are trying to, you know, beat others on the stylish point. So, whenever you attack, you're gonna play this combo card into your combo chain zone. And then, the longer your combo is, the higher points you're gonna get when you claim it. So, you are trying to be the stylish hunter of all those uh, players. So, it's not, you know fighting together you are not i mean you do but you are trying to be the the most stylish one and then approaching to the boss level you're gonna have this demon slayer achievement so whoever kills the boss gonna get 10 points it's gonna get quite bitchy in the end so <laughs> it's it, it's a good game i'm gonna say it again right let's have a look on the characters deck and uh, again, the insert is just bad. I mean, it's a car, pure car-driven system, and then you do shuffle a lot, and then you you, you can need to sleeve all those cards, all those beautiful cards. But then the insert doesn't have any room, not one single space for sleeved cards. So that's Dante. That's uh, that's his reference car. His movement speed is five, means you can move up to five spaces in your turn, and then the health point is eight. And his special ability, obviously, the different fighting style: swordmaster, trickster, and uh, royal guard, and uh, what else? Gunslinger, yes. Um, and his that's that swordmaster, basically. Uh, the cards are in two different um, decks. So one is your main deck, your starter deck, and the other one uh, with those right. Uh, so that's the main deck. You have nothing on the right corner, right side corner. So you don't need to purchase any of those cards. And um, so you have this damage hex in the middle, and then you get links on both sides. So basically, you need to uh, link all those combos to make it work, and to make it become a really, I know, you know, a chain link. Uh, you don't, you don't, you can't just play any cards to it. Uh, you have to match the link, 
Uh, you got link in, you got link out. Your link in should be matched to the previous link out. So if it was a red link, you can need to play a red link next to it. So that, that's the how that's our core system of this combo chain thing works. And then the other deck is the upgrade deck. So after each stage, you get chance to purchase then the alarm uh, to purchase the new cards to upgrade your deck. And then this is Nero. You got the six movement speed and six health point. Uh, Nero's ability is just new Devil Breakers. You got you got Overture as a default uh, Devil Breaker. You can purchase Rock Time, Punchline, and uh, Gabra in the upgrade deck. Not all eight of them, I believe, it was eight or nine Devil Breakers. I can't remember because you got the upgraded uh, Gabra in the DLCs. I don't know how many in total. Uh, again, all the core features of the characters being adapted into the tabletop so you can exceed you, you, you can manage to increase your melee damage by playing this card and then you got the color up uh, it's just it's adapting to tabletop so well it's not like dark souls they made it just uh bring back the video game onto tabletop too much and make it a little bit boring but this one is it's just there, spot on. The 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 you can still feel the DMC five gaming video game vibe, but then you can also see they spent quite a time fig figure out how to put this onto tabletop, and it just feels like every single car is is an Easter egg. It, it's very interesting. Um, all right, so uh, this is a. Uh, Basic. Uh, that's uh, I think that's the punchline. Yeah, that's the punchline. So you can move up to four hexes, passing through all occupied hexes. Uh, so there's no damage can be made on punchline. It's just a movement, a travel too. And Gabra is a many damage card, so you can damage one point to three uh, enemies right in front of you, and then you get a stun uh, and effect. And then when you return this card, so all the Devil Breakers, when you return this card from the combo chain, you're going to flip over, so it's like a one-time thing. And Rock Time, that's the best card I think they design. So for each enemy you hit with this card, you can draw another card and add to your hand. So basically, you are playing more cards in your turn. It's still your turn, but you get to play more cards because you, you have a hand limit five cards. But then, if you draw more, you get to you know move more. You get to attack more. That's literally just the rock time in the video game. You get play more uh, combos in the same time because rock time stop kind of stops the time. It just they did it so well. All right, that's Nero stack. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about at the mo this moment, but uh, I'm just waving my hands. Right next. Right, I spent quite a lot of time getting those cards out because the insert was just too tight. Uh, I unpack all those cards and then put them back just to be safe, but then I realized it's really, really hard to get them out. Like I said before, there's no extra space, not at all. So if you put it back in, it's hard to get out. And it's hard to put it back in as well. So I don't know, the, the insert is a huge minus one on this game to be honest. But even though it's still a great game, and let's say this game. So that's the V's deck. Um, and then they, they, they adopt V to tabletop as well, really nice. So uh, what V can do is, uh, you can still attack, and a range attack, a melee attack, those are all done by, uh, all range attack are done by Griffin. So if you're playing range attack, it's basically like Griffin shooting lightnings. And if you are playing melee attack, you are actually controlling the shadow to move around and attack. Um, v has only two copies of Checkmate, which essentially the uh, the the card the only the only damage V himself can make, and he can only use that to slay enemies. So all other uh, attack cards, you can't really killing demons because that's what they did in the game. You can't killing demons with shadows and griffin. They always have 
like one health point left there and they turn to white you have to execute them by yourself so that's the shadow reference card you can summon the shadow uh, it's the shadows can be treated as the hunter so you can hide behind shadows and you take no damage that the shadow do all the dirty works um, all the melee attacks yeah like I said the only two copies are checkmate uh, are actually attacked down by V and those are the only ones can slay enemies and uh, if you can slay enemies with checkmate they do no damage so that's another interesting thing so if you can't kill it you can't really play it um, so that's pretty much all um, either griffin's attack or uh, shadow's attack yeah so that's checkmate V makes this attack if enemy will not be slain by this attack it suffers no damage so it deals two damage to uh, three enemies in front of him next to him uh, so that's checkmate uh, I believe you can have another two copies of this uh, in the upgrade deck uh, upgrade version actually just like the one in the video game you can teleport into enemies and then stab them uh, I think that's that, that that's the one the gambit uh, I missed that but uh, anyway so all those are shadow stuff that's it that's gambit so move a up to eight hexes and then V makes this attack so essentially you are just doing whatever the video game uh, whatever you can do in the video game so you teleport next to the enemy and then you stab them with your cane not two copies of that so V is you know just interesting character on both video game and on tabletop as well uh, you controlling both your uh, both V and also shadows so you, you're controlling two miniatures at one time and then you, you can play quite a lot of strategy on that uh, and then you get a lot of movement just to uh, yep yeah, so you can remove V and set him right next to shadow or remove shadow and set it up next to V so it gives you a lot you know flexibility on movement so you can teleport next to shadow or you can teleport shadow back to V so you, you can hide behind the shadows <clears throat> and then that's Trish uh, well Trish wasn't a playable character in DMC5 uh, still isn't in DMC5 SE I believe uh, so they made this deck pretty much based on whatever you can do in 4SE so you got 5 movement speed and 7 health point uh, there's no special effects on Trish but all Trish uh, cards are uh, I believe they are involved they are involved with extra movement so you can move and then attack or attack then move so it's it makes her you know even more I don't know flexible I guess I don't I don't know but she has four basic attacks uh, rest of them they all have three basic attacks in their basic attack zone uh, Dante has one extra the royal god style uh, Nero has one extra punk uh, overture but uh, Trish Trish has four basic attacks so basically you can you can make it easier building up combos so that's the four uh, hunters in the core game and uh, there are three expansions uh, one is double trigger one is the walking arsenal and then the other one is the alpha and omega and i'll unboxing those in the next part of the video but for now i'm focusing on the bloody palace cards so in the core game you get tons of bloody palace cards already you get 25 i think uh, they're not used in every single game so you only use four of them uh, I say four but one of them has to be the boss so technically you're using three of them and then the game uh, supports one to four players so if you are playing solo you you choose uh, I think you get two starter level for one player yeah and you get another two starter level for two players and then another two starter level for three players and then two starter level for four players so they, they essentially they are just more enemies with more players uh, because you are competing each other you're getting orbs and then killing enemies and so every single car 
has all those setup infos. So you need this uh, Intusa Reload, you need those on board, um, and all the achievement details. And for the enemy, yes, so you are, uh, they, they did it into, it's just for the boss. So if you're playing solo, it's 45 health point. If you're playing with four players, it's 75 health point. And then each enemy has their own unique behavior deck. <laughs> I think Impusa, I think I said this before, Impusa has only four behavior decks and then the uh, rest of them are seven, I think real has six? I can't remember, but that's either seven or six. So basically, if you are uh, controlling enemies during the enemy phase, you can uh, draw top one of the behavior deck and then review it, resolve it, and then put it back on the bottom of the deck. So this way you can kind of predict what they're gonna move, what's their uh, pattern, what their attack pattern is. But then there are some cards that allow you to shuffle the entire deck, so it makes you can't predict the deck. So it's just it's just interesting. Even though they only have seven cards in the deck, they still can make some combos. Uh, like um, for this uh, Hell Antinora, I think that's what he this demon calls. Um, so he it, it can move up to seven hexes, and so and then next turn he might just you know spin around with this uh, giant slash or whatever that the move is called and deals tons of damage to every single character adjacent to him. It's it's just interesting behavior deck design. It's I think especially on the boss. I think the boss has more you know they can make more combos even because they have higher life points some enemies is uh, like in pusa they move up to three hexes to you and then next turn they don't have an next turn they're dead already that's that's kind of shame right so that's the three expansions and um, they're all in like those small rectangle box uh double trigger is slightly thinner but the rest two are the identical size Let's start with Walking Arsenal expansion. So this one is basically ladies expansion. You got Lady as play hunt the, the as playable character as a new demon hunter. That's the side of the box. And that's the other side of the box. Right, so I flip all the insert, you know, this way, so it makes it easier. Again, their insert is just uh not good, not good. Um it took me long time to take them out and then when i need to put them back in again it's gonna take me even longer uh so it's just uh, annoying and then they they also made this uh plastic cover so i don't know so so i don't know what's it called so so long so you, you you can't really put them back in like smoothly and then all those edge of those plastic insert, they kind of damage the box as well. If you can uh, probably see right there, right there. So it just, uh, it's annoying. It's annoying. It's really annoying. But other than that, all good. All good. So in this expansion, you got new enemies. You got new devil hunter. You got a new boss. Uh, and then you got all their cards as well. Um, uh, even though I believe uh, the boss is just uh, the uh, what's his name, Caval uh, Cavalier Angelo, yeah, it's just the Elder Geon Knight without the time stopping horse. But it's a new, different scope and then entire different behavior deck, so it's pretty much a new thing. Um, that's the rule book there, and that's Lady's token. Uh, so lady as a human, pure human demon hunter, and then to balance it out a little bit, and um, they made her a power up mood. Essentially, it's just you know, to her, it's basically her devil trigger, but uh, in a different way to activate. And then she has this grenade belt. So you can uh, gather grenades on it and then throw them out to deal extra damage. Um, and then there's another interesting mechanism with her as the locking. So for all other demon hunters, if you're doing range attack, by default, you are targeting the closest enemy in front of you. But Lady is different. 
Lady has this, you know, master maskmanship, and then you can target any enemies in front of her, and then leave a mark on it, so you can shoot this guy, whatever the, the, the distance is, or whatever, uh, if it's nearest or not. And then you got the new monster uh, demon miniatures, there's two bats, uh, let's try to get a focus here. Um, because they are purely standing on their tails, so they they made tails quite bigger, uh, just in case they break. Uh, all details are really nice. The small ones are extremely sharp, actually. And let's take a look at the big ones. So uh, the um, <laughs> Steamforge games they uh, made this update pretty much just before the actual delivery, I believe. So they made the factory made this uh, boss miniature run uh, supposed to be a plug-in miniature, so you can take it uh, off when you don't play it with it, and then put it into the insert. Um, but instead, the factory made it to be glued. So in that way, it works fine. But then when you don't want to play it, you can't put it back into the insert. So they. Uh, Steamforge Games as the factory just did another batch of those uh, minis, so mainly uh, Cavalier, Angelo, and Urizen. Uh, so that they, they come in those boxes. So they are identical miniatures, but with a you know different base. So this one you can plug in, and then you, you can play it on board. But after that, you can take it off to put it back into the insert. They're identical, it's just the base is a little bit thicker because you have to, you know, have enough uh, slot for the plug. Uh, but other than that, it's identical miniatures. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with actual minis. Uh, Cavalier Angelo does come with two different variants in the original video game. So you get this regular Cavalier Angelo and then there is one in, I think it was Mission, I can't remember, basically is a boss rush, V playing the boss rush. Uh, try to take back his power. Uh, you get a pure white Cavalier Angelo there. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, I'm fine with actual minis. I'm absolutely okay with that. And they're the same quality, so all good. And then that's the deck. I'm just not gonna show every single card of it. Uh, they are pretty much the same. They got Hunter's deck, Hunter's upgrade deck, and then all the enemy behavior deck, and then the Bloody Palace deck. Uh, so this, I think it contains 30 Bloody Palace cards. So you got all different setups involving those new enemies and then new boss and then new starter level I think as well and that's the uh, Hell Kena, the, the, the size guy details are really really good um, I'm happy I backed this project I'm really happy I backed this project this is um, uh, there was this review uh, not review uh, a comment on board game geek this is by far the best steamforge games this guy played yet this is the lowest funding level on kickstarter of their game uh, i found that funny yeah that's that's true but uh, it's just funny uh, i i too believe this is the best game they've made not all the games i played this is the best game steamforge games made and this is the lowest funding project for their all kickstarter games Anyway, that's that's all the uh, uh, ladies' expansion. Um, let's move on to next. I believe I am about to open Alpha and Omega. Yes, this is basically Virgil's expansion. Uh, shame they didn't make Virgil a playable character, considering five E, I mean five SE is out now. But uh, it's all right. You can you can either make house rules or you can wait for it if this game goes really well on retail they can probably make launch another kickstarter but anyway the rule book uh they which they didn't release as pdf online uh it's basically about how you set up virgil as boss and then it does provide quite some alternative play modes so you got a bush rush you got a boss rush uh in this mode basically you're taking 10 red ops um, before you start and then you can buy upgrade decks and then you play right against the boss and there's a classic DMD basically you know, just lower your health points down to three health points 
Nira 3, V, and Shadows 2, Trish 3, Lady 3. And there is an extended run. This is basically a small campaign. Basically, you play as the uh, regular game, and then after that, you, you, you take another Bloody Palace card, and then after that stage, you play another boss. So uh, it's Elder Jail Knight, and then after defeating that, you take another uh, Bloody Palace card, and then you play Urizen, and then another uh, Bloody Palace card, and then against the uh, Virgil. And there is an enhanced challenge mode. So in this mode, there is no green up. So if it, you are damaged, you you are you know are low on health, you're gonna be dead soon. And then there is a enhanced devil trigger mode. This is basically super uh, costume, uh, super devil trigger costume. You, you, you have infinity uh, devil trigger guard, and then you, you, you just keep play as devil trigger form. And there is a hype extended uh, round mode. This is basically a super long campaign, and, uh, and it requires the uh, working arsenal expansion. So you play against every single boss in this mode. Uh, rest of the blue book is just Virgil's details. Uh, so in this box, we got a token that's Urizen's Vortex token, I believe that's his thing. And then you got Urizen. This is very funny though. Uh, I did say all their miniatures are fantastic, but uh, Urizen, that's kind of it's still good, but uh, there is a weird spot. Uh, if you look at the render, or if you're familiar with the original video games, you can see all those uh, spikes, and here it's just, nah, not there, not there, not at all, it's a little tiny, I don't even know this can be called spikes, but uh, I do believe that's because the uh, difficulty of creating modes, and it, it may not be easier to take out because this is like being molded as one piece, uh, those you know curved spikes will cause some trouble, but uh, it's just funny seeing how this terrifying boss without all the spikes. Uh, same as the Cavalier Angelo, uh, this was supposed to be a plug-in miniature, and yet the factory made it to be glued it, and so they uh, they just asked another pad batch of this, and it comes in that. Brown little, brown little box as well. Uh, yep, this. Uh, again, that's identical model, and just you know different base. This one is thicker as well, so you can, um, you can put it in, and then play as a boss. And then if you don't want to play it, you can take it out and then put it into the insert. I know I feel like they can still make the insert work even with the. Base. I, don't, I don't know why they designed this, but anyway, that's Virgil. Uh, again, details really nice. It's fantastic minis, and um, the the face is almost amazing, almost amazing, almost perfect. And then his devil trigger. I believe this. I mean, he had devil trigger. I do believe this is basically his his same devil trigger. Although it's not really described in the video game, but uh, anyway, that's. I was fury. That's the 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 annoying elite monster in the game, and chaos. Again, come with all the bloody palace cards, all the enemy reference cards, all the behavior decks. Uh, this one doesn't come with any starter uh, levels, so it's just level one to level five, uh, which you can be play after the starter level. Uh, and finally, let's see the Kickstarter exclusive, uh, the Devil Trigger expansion. So this includes all four. Yeah, I was doing that Kickstarter exclusive thing. Uh, so this includes all four uh, Devil Trigger form of the uh, four characters in the core game. So Dante, Nero, Trish, and V. Uh, I mean, you get Nightmare for V, not his Devil Trigger form. But anyway, you get a rule book. And uh, you got their uh, Devil Trigger board. This is essentially their uh, their mana <laughs> uh, Devil Trigger card. 
So again, they they made this very nice design on this uh, Devil Trigger logo for each one of them. It looks really cool. And then you got this tokens. So basically, uh, when the uh, token uh, move up to the top bit of the uh, Devil Trigger board, and then you can activate your Devil Trigger anytime during your turn. And then let's take a look at the rest of the components. Uh, this one is actually all right. The, the, the plastic cover is not that big. So that's that's fine. That's easy to put it back in. But the, the one in uh, both Alpha and Omega and Lady Expansion, they're just too big. And then you got this nice fancy foil character reference cards. So all those uh, character image and all life points and their uh, facing are all UV printed. So you can see quite shining, quite reflective on that. Ooh, that's Trish, that's V, and also a bit of shadows there as well, yeah. And then ladies. <clears throat> that's just nice, you know, kind of promo thing. And then the backside as well, all UV printed. And then you got the deck for each Devil Trigger Demon Hunters. And you got those red orbs and green orbs. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they, they should make this into a, you know, just the proper sculpt instead of those uh, plastic crystal tokens. Uh, but I, I do believe that's going to cost a lot. But uh, that's fine. I love plastics, even those cheap transparent crystals. So that's uh, their deck. Uh, and then they also come with uh, two Devil Trigger related upgrade cards, Accumulate, so you can discard this card in your turn and just move your Devil Trigger marker up to two spaces. And then Extended Devil Heart, so you can get you know longer Devil Trigger form. And then this Reference card, so basically you, when you claim combos, you can advance your Devil Trigger marker one spaces. Uh, three, five combos, one space, six to nine, two spaces, 10 plus, that's three spaces. And then when you activate your Devil Trigger, you flip this card over, and then you start in, you start to draw cards from a Devil Trigger deck, and then you know perform as a Devil Trigger form. And then during any of turn, you're gonna move your two, uh, move your Devil Trigger marker two space down, and then if it reaches the end of the Devil Trigger card, you just deactivate your Devil Trigger. Uh, I believe. Dante has 20 cards in their Devil, Sing Devil Trigger deck. Nero and the Trish has 21 cards. Uh, Nightmare has only six because it works different from the others because it's it's you don't replace V with Nightmare. Instead, you summon Nightmare to the board. So you are basically having an extra companion fighting for you. I do believe you draw two cards. Um, for the Nightmare deck and then you can play one of them during your turn. It's just a different, completely different mechanism. And right, so uh, I'm gonna talk a bit detail about the rule uh, in this part. Um, so this is basically a quiet setup here. Um, each game involves four different um, Bloody Palace cards. So if you're playing solo, uh, you take uh, you take one from the uh, starter cards, uh, one of the two cards starter start one player, and then uh, one level one bloody palace card and one, one level two bloody palace card, and finally the boss. If you're playing two player, you're gonna pick one from the start two player level, and then one level two and then one level three, and then the boss. If you're playing three players, it will be start three players, and then level three, and then level four, and then final boss. If you're playing four players, that will be start from four players, and then level four, and then level five, and then the final boss. So you have tons of different setups, but those are just the official setup. I mean, there's no restrictions on you can play how many minis on the board. If you really want to challenge yourself, put all 12 inputs of queen, not inputs of queen, put all 12 inputs on the board, put the inputs of queen on board, 
put chaos, put real, put fury, put whatever you want onto the board. It's I don't know. It, there's no frames of this game. You have the core game mechanic. You have deck. You have all their reference card, all their enemy behavior deck. Uh, you can set up whatever you want. Um, but they do provide all those official setups. They do. They those I do believe they are properly balanced. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's already quite some content there anyway. Uh, so this is a uh, solo setup for the start. I believe that's four in Pusa, uh, four red in Pusa there, and I'm playing as Dante. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about at this moment. Probably just some, you know, chit chat. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Alright, okay. So here's the setup complete. And uh, I'm about to shuffle my deck. I'm gonna draw five at the starting hands. I have Rebellion cut left, I will need an Ivory Volley, Million Stab, High Time, and Stinger, Grey. Let's, I'm right in the middle, let's play Stinger. Why not? I'm going to play Stinger, right? I think I'm going to play Stinger. Yeah, I'm going to play Stinger. All right, I'm talking about the movement. So yeah, you got the movement uh, up to your speed, and you can either move first or attack first. It doesn't matter, but you can only move one time per turn. So as me Stinger, you move up to three hexes, and then attack. So that's uh, how many damages? That's two damage. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's actually another annoying part of this game. So you have to constantly uh, putting those damage tokens onto board, and then you're gonna move your miniatures around. So it's you know just kind of annoying. But I personally can't figure out a better solution of this because the, the, there are multiple enemies on board, and then you can't put those tokens on the reference card because there are multiple copies of them. Uh, so Redding Pusa will drop three red orbs if dead, and then it has seven life points. Uh, Red Impusa and Impusa are, are, you know, lowest level demon, so they work as a group. So you draw one behavior card and then you resolve it for every single Impusa or Red Impusa on the board. Right, so I played Stinger, which has a wild link out, and uh, which means I can play any color I wanted. And this is a finisher. So you can claim your combo chain once and only once per turn uh, during your turn. Um, but there are finishers uh, with that, like, let's, like this one. You must claim your combo after playing this card. Those are the effects. Uh, claim your combo are those. Those effects are not included in your you know once per turn claim your combo uh, limits. So you can play finisher and still make another combo, still claim it. Uh, I'm gonna play what? I'm gonna play Ionian Ivory. So I'm gonna move up to one hex. I'm gonna shoot for one damage there. I'm gonna use my basic attack. Or I was gonna actually move to there anyway. Uh, I'm gonna use another Ionian Ivory shooting. Another one damage there. That's four damage in total, and then I'm gonna play rebellion swing. So that's one damage there. That's a basic attack card. So that's oh, that makes it five damages there. Yes, yeah, so I'm just swapping out. You know, all those damage tokens. That's annoying. I'm gonna play Rebellion cut left. Uh, this guy is just dead, there's two damages there. Um, so there are three logos on the three icons on the card. So the one on the left, the one on the left is the uh, push away. 
So for each attack with this icon light up, you push your enemies uh, one space away from you. And the one in the middle is stun. So basically it gives the enemy one stun token. If they have stun token, basically they can't move during the enemy phase because they're stunned. And then during the end of enemy phase, they remove all the stun tokens. And then the one on the red is a follow up icon. Uh, means you can, if you push away this enemy, you can, you can choose to follow up to the space where this enemy was. So I'm gonna just do that. I moved to the space where Impusa was standing there. And then whoever slays the demon, and then they get to drop the orbs. So you get one orb has to be in uh, where this enemy stands. And then the other ones um, evenly spread next to the uh, one in the middle. So I'm going to drop the one in the middle there and then drop another one next to me and the other one right on me. So I'm going to just eat this red orb straight away. If it's a you know huge enemy or gigantic, uh, they're gonna well, gigantic enemy doesn't really drop uh, orbs. So if it's a huge enemy, uh, they're gonna drop three orbs right in where they were standing. So I'm gonna move one, two, three, four, five to there. I'm gonna take this red orb, and then I'm gonna use this finisher. So that gives three damage, and uh, I'm gonna push this guy away, and then uh, a stun token there. This one doesn't have follow up, so I can't really follow up that. Um, then I have to claim my combo. That's one, two, three, four, five, six cards. I believe that's three points for me. So I'm gonna move my uh, token around the stylish points tracker up to three spaces, and then I'm gonna return my basic attacks back to basic attack area. I have one card left in my hand, and I think that's fine. I mean, those two can't really reach me, and the one right in front of me is stunned, so I'm absolutely safe for now. So that's Hunter's phase end, so that's my turn end. If there's another player, move to their turn, but it's solo game, so I'll just end the entire hunter phase and then move into uh, the enemy phase. And so for enemy phase, I'm gonna draw uh, Red Impusa's behavior deck. So, uh, Swam. Move each Red Impusa three hexes towards the nearest hunter, then it makes this attack. So, um, this two, is, this is down, so it doesn't really move. And the other two move up to three spaces. So let's move three spaces. And then they are not next to me, so they can't really attack. And then I'm gonna put this uh, bottom of the deck, so I can, you know, kind of predict they aren't gonna swarm again next turn, at least. Oh no, is there another copy? I can't remember. I don't think there's another copy. Uh, but it's only four cards. You don't need to predict what they're gonna do. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna just put the deck back. Then the enemy phase and so it's gonna back to my turn. And during the end of the enemy phase, you can discard any cards from your hand and then draw up to five cards. Your hand limit is five, so draw up to five cards. So I have one and I don't think I'm gonna ditch that. Uh, let me draw four cards there. So, um, I have high time of what else? Uh, the stun token is removed. I have uh, high time, high time, of two high time. Ooh, 
Rising Dragon have quite a shot, I believe. And then what's the other one? Uh, the other one is Bark Blow. Hmm. So. Dante doesn't really have many ring links. In fact, only three. So two high time, one helm breaker, I believe. And it's not good. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna use Ebony and Ivory first. Hmm. Yep, I'm gonna use Ebony and Ivory first so I can move up to one space and then one damage deal and then I'm gonna using quite a shot so this this range attack must be made with enemies within four hexes so that's kind of short range range attack but also deal one damage to the uh, enemies uh, adjacent to the target then I'm gonna use um, Barlock Strikes. This is just dead. One orb, two orbs, and the other one, I'm just gonna take it. So I think I'm, need, I'm gonna play this. I uh, I think the bulk blow allows me to uh, make extra move, but I need to move first. So I'm gonna move to there. <coughs> I'm gonna move one, two, three to there. I'm gonna use bulk blow. So I'm gonna attack for one one damage there and then I can move up to two spaces then make another attack so it's two damage there and I'm gonna end this combo with rising dragon I believe so I'm gonna move to there okay and then I'm gonna use four cards there I'm gonna use rising dragon am I gonna use it on <laughs> ah. so that's five cards there I believe that's four uh, two points but the rising dragon doubles uh, I think I doubled also the previous one as well so it was six and this one is four points I'm at 10 points on the track actually <clears throat> and then this also gives us a stun and then also a push away so I'm gonna return my basic attacks back to basic attack area I have two copies of high time left those are just gonna be you know my dodgy cost each one can dodge up to two damages so I'm still all good um, besides a royal guard style which allows me to dodge one extra damage from enemy and they're gonna do close in each reading pusa move three hexes towards the nearest hunter and then shuffle the deck so I can't really predict the next move but uh, they're just gonna move to me and this one is done it doesn't even move so I'm still safe and by next turn they probably all dead to be honest so this one shuffle the deck after returning this card back to bottom so this is just a uh, a effect that prevents you you know planning your movement because you end up me know what they're gonna do next turn because the deck is shuffled and that's end of the enemy phase I'm gonna fill my cards and then to my turn I'm gonna do, do, do. Well, I have a rebellion cut right. I've caught a shot. I have what's the other one I had? Uh, high time is just really not that great in Dante's deck because, like I said, there's no 
Green Link. Not much. Only three copies. Two hard times, one helm breaker. You can't play all those, you know, range attack, which essentially blank link that can be played after any link, but it's just not enough. Not enough. I'm gonna use uh, Abony Ivory Shot. I'm gonna move to here. And then I'm gonna. Ooh, I have to. Um, you have to deal damage to play a card, so you can't just play a card without damaging anything. So you ha I have to face to this Impusa and then play the Rebellion Strike and then play Rebellion Cut right. I'm gonna push this away to here. I'm gonna follow up to. Yeah, I think I uh, <laughs> I misplayed here. I should have moved to the uh, the the uh, the hex the Impusa was standing on, but instead I just moved one space. So that was a <laughs> that was house rule really over. <laughs> but anyway, I played the uh, rebellion cut left, so I can damage both those Impusas. Uh, I think this one is dead. The other one is, is it dead? And I'm gonna push both here. I did this time right. And this one is dead. And uh, run red orb. Uh, also, I think if this enemy is slain, you don't need to. Uh, you don't. You don't push this guy away. Yeah, but you 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 can move into where he where the enemy was standing. I'm gonna play quite a shot. So that was four four damages on this red Pusa. I'm gonna make another two. That's six, which leaves one life points there. I can just claim this combo. And then I'm gonna just make another range attack to kill it. So that's how many cards there? One, two, three, four, five. Another two points, I believe. And then I'm just gonna, you know, play high time, kill it. That's the so stage cleared. And then when the stage is cleared, you resolve all the, you know, end of stage effects. And then you get to look through your upgrade deck, spend all the red orbs you gained, and then purchase upgrade cards, fill your deck, and then reset your deck as well, and then uh, review next Bloody Palace card, and then set up the board, pass first player token, and starting next stage. Yep, that's the basic, that's the basic uh, playthrough of the first stage. Let's fast forward to the uh, miniature so that's all the miniatures, uh, not all the miniatures, that's most of the miniatures from Devil May Cry the Bloody Palace. Let's have a look on the detail bit. Right, uh, again, the Hunter's miniature are all those white color, which doesn't really show off all the details, but you can probably see it already. The face is absolutely amazing. Dante's face is absolutely amazing. All those details are all there. Uh, the, the pose is also quite dynamic. But there are some issues I do like to point out. First of all, on the left shoulder, uh, this 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 design bit, you can probably say it's kind of blurred out, and then there's a mode line there, right there. Uh, it's kind of annoying. You do need to kind of fix it if you want to paint this right. And then also the uh, um, the uh, because the left arm is a separate piece, uh, they glued it back to the body, so th th there's a crack there. You can need to fill it. Um, the the gun here, I do believe if Dante is holding guns in, if Dante is holding a gun in his right hand, it would be ivory, and ivory is a right-handed gun, and the ejection slot is supposed to be on the other side, uh, which means this can either be a ivory, uh, be ebony, or just a mistake. 
the injection slot is on the left side of the gun, which essentially is for left-handed guns. Uh, so uh, I don't know, it's not a big mistake, but uh, I do like to point out. And then if you are looking at Dante's head, uh, mainly the hair, and uh, because of the mood line, you can probably uh, see the left side of the hair is thicker than the right side of the hair, but it's mainly caused by the mood line there. If you clean that mood line out, it's it's all right. The head is, is fine. It's not like the other side is bigger than the other. It's fine. Um, then it's the handle of the rebellion. Um, the This is basically, literally, caused by the insert. The insert has a this flat surface right against this handle. And then, so if you are, you know, looking at other unboxing video or some photos from, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you probably see all Dungeon has this uh, handle rebellion band. That's because of the insert. And you can, uh, you know, put some hot water on the insert and then just push the, uh, the insert in a little bit so you can make room for this handle that that'll be fine and the side the, the top bit and then the, the side of the rebellion is also uh, need to be fixed uh, the mode line is quite obvious you do need to you know take it out uh, the entire rebellion is made of ABS I think that's hot plastic so it doesn't nearly bend um, but uh, you know, then the handle is exception here. Um, other than that, the, the the miniature is is absolutely fine and absolutely fantastic. All the details. <clears throat> uh, let's look at Nero. Okay, that's Nero, and then Nero's face is also absolutely fantastic. Uh, the issue is just like Dante. The mood line is there, kind of causing some trouble. And it's right there, and because his, uh, because of the mood line's position, it's kind of hard to fix it. You do need to, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know, use sandpapers. You know, fold your sandpapers really small on the edge, and then trying to sand it. And the pistol, uh, the revolver. I'm not expecting too much detail, but it's all right. It's better than the uh, ivory or the ebony over there. Uh, it's better than that. Um, the necklace, you can probably see it clearly, and then all those uh, details on the sweater um, are all there. The coat is sharp as well. Uh, all those, you know, details, textures, lines on top of it. Uh, that's that's all good. And the red queen is a little bit blurred, though. It's not as detailed as the rest of the mini, but uh, it's all right. Even though this one is using ABS, but mine is still bent somehow. I don't, I don't know. I can't really fix that. It's not like regular PVC. You can hot water it and then re, uh, reshape it. The ABS kind of has kind of resistance on that. And the revolver again, it's all right. It's not too bad. The uh, issue is uh, uh, the uh, devil breaker, and it's just. Nah, the devil breakers can just blurred out entirely, and there's no like uh, details showing the joints, and then there's no detail showing all the uh, pieces clearly. It's all kind of blurred together, but it's all right. It's 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 something you can fix on painting, so it's all right. And the boots here, and the mood line went right through the side of the boots, so it's can be fixed easily, not too much trouble. Rest of the mini, fantastic, other than the Devil Breaker. That's Trish. Uh, again, the face is absolutely amazing. They did a really great job on this one. But the pistol, the Umbra and Luce, is, they are uh, they are just blurred out, especially the one on the left, I don't know which one is which though. I think right one is Umbra and the, the left one is loose. Uh, I don't know. But the one on right is alright and then the ejection slot is correctly positioned. 
but the other one it's just you know stick right to the leg and you can barely see uh you know the shape of the gun because it's right there on the leg and uh, this one is just a duplicate of the right hand gun so that has the injection slot on the other side as well it's, it's just a round and detail and then look at this side it's completely flat uh, again you can, you can fix it by green stuff you can use green stuff to re-sculpt this rectangular shape a little bit and then fix the ejection slot as well which I did I did actually um, but that's that's mainly Trish's problem um, the two guns are just not well produced let's see I'm pretty sure they sculpted fine but just the, the details uh, lost during the PVC production <clears throat> And look at the packs, it's a little bit too much, isn't it? And the hair is amazing, the face is amazing, the arms, the whole body uh, are amazing, uh, just the pistol. And yeah, it's, the hands are even sculpted, every single finger, you can see it clearly. And there's a little Lightning logo on the boots as well. I didn't notice that. Hmm. Anyway, that was Trish. Now come to V. Uh, again, face is amazing. Uh, V's face, not Griffin's. Griffin's face is a mess, to be honest. And uh, the Griffin's legs are all kind of blurred out. There's basically none there. Uh, there's nothing left. Uh, it's like Griffin is spawned from V's arm um, but again that's something you can fix easily with green stuff uh, let's look at the Griffin's face it just it's just a mess to be honest Griffin's face is absolutely a mess you can see the eyes and uh, you can see the eyes from this side but this side is absolutely nothing I can't tell anything from the other the, well, left side, left side of the Griffin's face, there's nothing there. All the feathers are fine, are all, you know, really detailed, really sharp. Uh, just the face, nah, not good enough. Uh, on V himself, all those details, all the stitches on the code, they're all nicely sculpted. Uh, there's quite big mold line here, but again, that mold line is, that happens every single time. Uh, it's mainly just Griffin's face kind of annoys me uh, also the left hand of V's if you see it from the from this perspective it's fine but if you turn it around it just it's mutated the hand is mutated it, it's it's just not right I think that they're just missing a big chunk of information on the back side of the hand uh, but from the but front view, that's absolutely fine. Backside, nah, just missing too much. I think I also fixed this by using green stuff. Then I fixed a lot. But anyway, that's that's V. Uh, main issue: Griffin's head and uh, left hand of the V. Also Griffin's legs. Uh, rest of that, fine. Absolutely amazing miniature. <clears throat> um, who else? Faces, yeah, I'm still showing the V's face. Yeah. Gotta say, all their human characters' face are all well sculpted. Uh, oh, Shadow. Uh, Shadow, uh, I believe the, they actually uh, mentioned this in Kickstarter update. They had to change Shadow's um, head direction, also tail's direction, because it just make it easier to pull out from the mood. Uh, which is fine, I, I think. It was uh, head was tilted slightly to left more, but this is all right. And the thing is, uh, shadows, teeth. You can see it's just a rounded orb over there instead of sharp teeth. 
So it's uh, again the cloud is a separate piece. There's quite a crack in between, but that's something easily to fix, uh, considering the uh, the uh, design of shadow. This 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 giant piece is just pretty much like a I don't know some kind of extension from its main body. So you don't need to worry about losing any details if you are feeling the crack. You just put green stuff in and then make it flat. That, that, that'll do it. And there are quite some mood lines on the side of the body, but it's all right. It's not too bad. Um, it's mainly just the teeth. Uh, it's annoying. <laughs> That's Shadow there. Let's see in Pusa. Uh, this one, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's uh, quite some detail on the face again. Uh, this weird skull uh, designed face with two giant, I don't know, this weird demon creature design. And uh, it is alright, but uh, again, the mood line is kind of ruining the, 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 the mouse bit. So the head is fine, this giant as looking head and um, all the muscle groups are defined well and the uh, little wings are all defined well as well and the tails are not too much this is supposed, supposed to be three uh, sharp um, edges on the tail I believe but it's just all blurred together there and then all those, uh, the feet supposed to be really thin, but I think it's because they can literally put it stand on the base. It's that thing, and then they just make it super thick. And uh, there's some edge on the side of the arm. Left arm is all right. You can see some information information there. Right arm is just kind of blurred out. But anyway, that's the lowest level demon. I don't really care about the details of that. Uh, here is the uh, Hail Antonora, I believe. Um, this one is, is, is great. It, uh, the information of the rope is defined really well. You see all the texture is on the rope and then uh, on the skin. And so the edge on the blade is kind of a little bit, you know, those scratches are kind of a bit too much. Uh, but it's all right. It's miniatures. So some details are supposed to be exaggerated, so that's fine. Uh, I'm not sure if the head is supposed to leave this kind of giant space in between the robe and the head. I don't. I don't think so. I think that's supposed to be filled with some texture. I think that's just because the head is a separate piece, so we'll put it back together. It requires some effort and then some of them are just you know leaving cracks in between that's that's that that's absolutely normal but uh, the blade the skin texture the robe is fine that's all fine uh, I do need to point out that the 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 pose is causing this creature fall around quite easily uh, rest meters are all fine because the, the pivot right in the center of the base but this one has this hand with this giant blade out so it can I uh, just fall easily and this is Sukto Angelo that's the lower knight uh, demons and this because it's I don't know they, they made the details quite large on this one like the, the fabric it, it's just a little bit too much but again it's miniature some details needed to be exaggerated that much and the motor lines right here it's annoying it's not easily fixed and there is a bit ejection uh, points there that just need to be fixed the shield and the sword is as great as nothing need to talk about it's just great it's just great detail and then let's see the large, huge enemy. That's the Proto Angelo, I believe. 
again the texture on the blade are a little bit too much but it's all right it's all right and then the fabric it's amazing the details are just tons of information being defined properly tons of information there even the inside of the, the cape and then all those uh, I'm not sure if this those are the muscles or the, the arms or the armors I, just, I don't know it but but all those details are defined really well <coughs> and did I find the boot line somewhere can't remember I don't need to I don't I don't think you need to fix this one a lot and just it's ready to go you can prime it and paint it straight away uh, right there there you go that's the motor line there that, that, that that's basically nothing you, you don't need to worry about the, this bit it's not a problem you need to fix uh, you can pretty much cover this with paint so it's that's fine I don't think you need to work too much on this miniature I'm not sure if that crack is intended or is because it's a, the KB separate piece that leaves a uh, crack there but I do think the cape supposed to be you know there is a gap between the cape and the main body I do think so uh, let's look the riot riot or how do you pronounce that? I don't know and the issue is its head uh, it's uh, the, the mouse is a little bit shifted I don't know I mean I'm not saying I, I don't think it's supposed to be you know like the, the mouse opening like that but uh, other than that all the skins all those small scales all those you know the the, the the top spikes on the back and then all those information are textured all there the details just too good to be SFG to be honest and eyes are there and then Mode lines right in the middle of the hand, I think, but that's not a huge problem. It's not like heavy mode lined, it's something you can hide with paint. <laughs> right, that's the Impusa Queen. Oh, this one is just amazing, and maybe because it's too big, and so all the information is there. Uh, just look at this sharp edge again this one you don't need to uh, worry too much on mood lines as well it's pretty much ready to go mini uh, you don't need to fix it not really you might want you know just cling a little bit on the side of the edge but that's really it you don't need to use green stuff or whatsoever you can prime it straight away and then paint it. It's it's absolutely fine. The face there, it's really detailed. All those I don't know giant bows on the head, those designs are sharp. <coughs> really nice, really nice minis. And let's see the gigantic enemy, the Elder Jeon Knight. This is amazing. The details are amazing. Literally, the, 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 all those scales on the horse and then the, 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 the texture on the skin, the, the details. Uh, I've got no other words for it, <laughs> to be honest. I did glue this horn back, but you can barely see anything, anything, anything damage I caused. Damn, I'm good. Yeah, the, the, there you go. You, you can see a little bit crack over there. That's the trace of the glue, I believe. This shining bit, that's the glue. But it, it's fine. Uh, I also grew the head back uh, because mine was just like the one in Dice Tower unboxing. The head just off. I uh, also grew the top bit of this. Yeah, you can see it there. I glued this back as well. I was lucky to find this one in the box. It's too small. Could just lost it. Uh, but it's fine. I didn't. Uh, again, it's really, really, really detailed. 
I wasn't expecting like Simon level minis from Steamforge games, but this just impressed me, amazed me too much, really. Look at the detail, dang. Uh, one thing I didn't need to point out, the, the pose of this horse is a little bit weird. Um, because it's, it feels like it's tilting to the way it's gonna fall down, but then it's not. Um, like from this perspective, it's fine, but if you're looking from the back side, it feels like it's gonna fall, is it? I don't know, it just feels weird. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the... I don't know, I feel like that's with the original sculpt. But, again, I'm not too sure. But I, I do believe the, the, the 3D render looks fine, but then this one looks a bit weird. Maybe just perspective thing. Anyway, I found that weird, but not, not you know, not a 4D production weird just weird right so that's all the uh, minis from the core game you got the four hunters you got 12 impusa you got the four Soto angelo you got four hail and tenora you got one impusa queen you got one riot you got one proto angelo and then the elder gem knight uh, for the skill Right, so the scale, like I said, it's larger than regular 32mm miniatures. So this one is from Ram and Bones, that's a DMC crossover, uh, Ram and Bones second tie, that's Captain Hales. I Captain Hale, I believe? Yeah. Anyway, it's a Dantine crossover. Uh, so it's bigger than that. And this is from Zombie Side, the uh, TMNT expansion. Uh, that's the, I can't remember the name, the alien robot thing. Um, this is from Cthulhu Death May Die, so it's again it's bigger than that. It's bigger than regular thirty-two millimeter scale miniatures, uh, but it's pretty much the same scale as Kingdom Death. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know how those uh, same scale miniatures are different sizes. Um, maybe just because Dante is like I don't know too tall and then all those devil hunters they are like perfect model uh, size uh, here is the uh, Dante against the uh, uh, Hellboy right so it's still taller than Hellboy uh, what else I have here uh, Shredder that's the same that's from zombie side the TMNT expansion again it's taller than Shredder but I think it's fine as a, uh, I don't know, if you want to use this as a universal minis using D&D or other uh, tabletop role-playing games or make it cross over to Zombie Side or other uh, board games with tons of miniatures. I think it's fine. It's not a scale that too large, but the enemies, the demons, they are, they are pretty big. Uh, if you can see that's Raphael against Soto Angelo and that's a that's a giant ass shield there but for the hunters they're fine uh, I think the scale is it's all right it's a little bit big but it's the you know it's the, the size you can you, you can accept And then let's compare to the DMC to the Resident Evil 2. Uh, well, Resident Evil 2 had the miniatures small anyway, and then the details are just... Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> anyway, that's the core game miniatures. And I am about to show the miniatures from the expansions. Right, so that's the minis from the expansion. If you can see, I'm painting the Red Impusa, the Impusa Queen already. Uh, so that's Virgil. 
uh, well, it's probably too close, but you can see the details. Oh, there the face is, well, almost amazing. Uh, you can probably see the left, right side of his face a little bit squished, but the, but it's all right. It's all right because when you look at this mini, you're mainly looking at this right face. So if it's too flat, it's not like a too big deal. It's all right. It's something you can accept again. Something you can accept. Um, the uh, left arm is a separate piece, so there's a crack here. Um, the uh, coat is uh, nicely done. The textures are all on there, and they even made. They even sculpted the uh, the this 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 bit. So it's backside of this left leg because the the coat is like. Uh, three pieces separated um, the back side so you can see the back side of his uh, left leg and then they sculpt that as well and then let's see uh, Virgil's Sin Devil Trigger and the blade Yamato is a little bit thick and, uh, and it looks a little bit weird but uh, I don't know. I, I I might just need to sandpaper this down a little bit. But other than that, oh, look at the detail, man. Look at the skin texture. All the the all the informations. I love the wings. The wings are super sharp, clear. And the face. I mean, considering from this angle and this size, I wasn't expecting perfect face on um, Devil Trigger forms, but this one looks alright. This one's better than Dante's Sin Devil Trigger. Uh, you can see the side of the, you know, there's an itch coming out from the from side of the face. And the uh, lighting blade on both arms uh, are kind of simplified. They were a lot better on 3D render, but it's alright. The tails, it's nice, it's sharp. This is this is amazing, amazing. All right, that's Virgil and uh, his double trigger. That's chaos there. Again, all the details. Look at the skin. Look at the texture. Uh, there's quite big mood lines here, but it's right on top of the edge, so it'll be easy to fix. Uh, this is a, just another giant lizard with blades on the back. Um, yeah, this is just nothing to complaining about. Um, or oh, I do need to point out the pose. Uh, it makes makes quite hard to paint the inside. I mean, not not inside, but the the bottom bit of the chaos. Um, there's a quite some. Crackers on, and cracks on the arm and legs, considering a separate piece and glued back on. So that's fine. It's it's fixable. And the face, uh, I haven't really paid much attention on Chaos's face because most of the time they're just like a a wheel running around. And then I do think they have this extra skeleton to cover his eyes or some sort of. It's some like shield design on. On the face, and this is just another giant lizard fury. This is the the most annoying elite demon enemy in Devil May Cry Five. Uh, this one teleports, and uh, 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 just annoying. It's just annoying, and the details again all nice. All those scales, this skin textures, the teeth are uh, nicely done. Really nicely done. Uh, well, the the blade from the arm uh, were bent. I have to use hot water to reshape them a little bit, but it's it's fine. It's not even a problem. Uh, there's a bit ejection point here, and uh, you kind of need to be fixed, but it's all right. If you if you just sandpaper it, it won't hurt much. It's a small small part of the whole miniature, and you can probably freehand the. Shadows on that as well to you know showing off the scales. 
Oh, anyway, that that's the uh, Alpha and Omega extension. I believe. Uh, right. No, no, that's uh, still Judaism left. Uh, the spikes I mentioned earlier, or like shrinked backing, but other than that, it's, it's fine. Uh, this part is supposed to be a separate piece, uh, but uh, I, I guess it's easier to make the mold and then they make them together as one piece. So you can you can probably highlight this out and then using strong contrast to you know make it look like a separate piece, but uh, it's all right. <clears throat> Again, all the scales, the textures on the skin, all the eyes, um, the uh, teeth. It's a bit um, blurry, but I do believe you can fix it with paint, just using again high contrast to you know showing off the teeth. That's fine. That's easily done. Um, other than that, again, it's it's a great model. It's a great mini. Uh, it's, it's more than mini, it's quite big, but a great model. Yeah, I think that's all from Alpha and Omega expansion. And uh, I'm about to showing off the uh, Walking Arena. That's the hell. I, I, I don't remember the bat's name. I can't, there's two bats, I can't remember their names. So one. Hell bed or something like that. This one, this this is the one that explodes. I think they all explode, but this one is the red one. That one is on, always on fire. This one is always on fire. Um, all this texture on wings and just ah, uh, just ah, uh, really good job. SFG did really a good job on this one. Really, really good job. And then that's the smaller one. Yeah, this one is really sharp. This one's really short. It's smaller. Uh, the wings is slightly close compared to the other one, but this one um, is really short. All the details, man. Look at them. Just nice. I could never imagine SFG did this quality miniature if right after Resident Evil 2, to be honest. Resident Evil 2's mini were just like the, and then DMC Five is amazing. I don't know. Maybe they. Maybe it's because the huge investment they got. I think it was what. It was five. Quite a lot of zero, I believe. It was the last year thing. Uh, here's Lady. Uh, Lady is just not as good as other hunters, and the face is. All right, but not that good. And the whole mini feels a little bit blurred out. Uh, the information's there, just kind of you know, soft. Just kind of soft. Um, but uh, it's all right. You, you, you can just enhance the um, lights and shadows, painting. And it's not too much trouble for me. Not too much trouble for me, but it, it is softer than rest of the hunter minis. And I not I don't really like the pose. It feels like uh, I don't know a bit dumb to be honest. This this this, this pose feels a little bit dumb. And there is a power up mode. This one, um, this one. Uh, again, the the, the 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 whole mini feels a little bit blurred out. It's softer than others, and the face a little bit. I don't know. It feels like the the, the face is a bit wrong as well. Um, not sure if I can fix that. It's like a, the left side of the face being you know squished. And other than that, uh, this one does show off the uh, back side of the jacket. Uh, there's uh, patterns on the there. And the original one has this rocket right there block thing. So this one has this showing off really nicely. But again, the, the lady are softer than other hunters minis. Uh, what else we have in this expansion? Uh, right, uh, Hell Kena. Uh, I believe that's the name. That's classic DMC uh, mobs. Um, like Hell Antonora, the, the rope detail, the, the 
giant size, the, the wooden handle, the skull face, all the information has been like produced really nice. Look at the texture of the wood, man. And then the pose is really dynamic. Uh, what else we have in this question? I think that left only the boss. Yep. Uh, Cavalier Angelo. <laughs> it's completely new sculpts compared to the Elder Jeon Knight, and completely new behavior deck, completely new uh, mechanic. And I don't know, I think, I feel like this one is bigger than the one on the horse uh, but anyway the the details are like perfect this one literally perfect look at the face man look at the face look at the uh, textures on the chest on the legs on the hands it's perfect uh, one thing I didn't need to point out uh, the the left hand I think it's probably also because the difficulty of molding. Uh, it's not five fingers spread out. It's only like uh, it's like a weird pose. Um, let's see the Devil Trigger expansion. Here, that's nightmare. Uh, maybe it's because it's quite giant. I don't know a chunk of weird half liquid design um, you can't really pick something on that so it's just it looks nice it looks really nice um, <clears throat> almost perfect uh, with all those you know uh, the left arm and right arm are separate pieces so uh, there is a bit crack in between if you can feel that it's almost perfect um, it's just um, really sharp, mini, and detailed. And it's heavy. This one is heavy. And uh, look at the detail on the I don't know eyeball. This, this is this eyeball, I believe. This patterns. This, this, this. The whole, the whole mini is uh, detailed. Uh, well, this is not detailed, but uh, that's that's the only problem I believe. It's uh, again caused by mold line, but not too much trouble. It's only like one or two spot like missed out the detail. The rest are all fine. Um, what else? What else I have here? Trish still trigger form. Yeah, the well Trish doesn't really have a you know a different devil trigger form. I believe she was just you know unleash her lightning power in 4SE and then there's no different demon form for her. So they made uh they made her welding the sword of Sparta. And there's a bit problem on the eye bit. Uh, I think I fixed this by using uh, a little bit green stuff and uh, to cover that 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 support that spot. But the spotter is well sculpted. It's really well sculpted. The uh, the texture on the on the <laughs> on top of it. It's just nicely done and then the gem I believe that's two gems there is one green and two red one or uh, three three two, one green and two no one red one big red one and then a green one I can't remember a split like what two to three gems on the sword and uh, it looks nice And let's see, Miro. Right. Look at the muscles. Look at the muscle group. Look at the the hands. Look at the shoulder bit. Um, 
shame his you know this 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 weird design on his head it was separated uh, it was like an extra piece when in it was in the prototype stage but uh, I guess they just couldn't be bothered to make three separate pieces for the head and then glue them back so they made those two so they made this two extra piece attached to his head uh, which is also fine uh, it's not like blurred together so it still can easily tell it's an extra piece on the head um, the wings the, the the two giant hands on the back are just amazingly detailed the feathers are nicely done the red queen has a bit problem on the other side so if you can, you can if you can see uh, the mood lines on the other side, the on the edge of the other side, uh, need to be taken care of. But from this side, uh, it looks fine. It's really sharp, and it's ABS material. And I do need to point out this. That's not caused by the mood line. That's just the uh, the trigger. That's just the trigger on the handle. So if you are painting this, don't don't cut this off. That's the trigger. Um, other than that, nothing to complain. Um, the hand is also in a weird pose. I do believe you, they can make you know five fingers all out separately. So they made it like uh, it's like this this pose so you have one finger out and the other three on together um, that's fine it's not like big deal and then there's a little bit mold lines um, plastic over there uh, you need to take care of that otherwise it's quite obvious on the hand the face is really nice although the, the uh, they're missing like two uh, the, the two you know spikes on the jar and then the mood lines on hair are kind of annoying as well so if you want to paint this properly you might need to spend a bit time on this also the head is a separate piece and then the two wings are a separate piece so you need to use green stuff a lot to fill the fill the gap last one the thing devil trigger of Dante I honestly I am a bit disappointed on this um, because first of all on the 3d render and also the resin prototype not not resin prototype but 3d printing prototype the devil saw Dante is uh, is open like activated so you get this phantom swords out um, but then on the final production copy they didn't even bother to close it but they just you know put some plastic in between you, you can tell that the, the blades are still open but then it's it it's closed so I, I don't know it just I feel like they could do better they could do better definitely better I mean I can't even fix this because that's that's tons of work I have to you know cut the entire middle part out and then sandpaper it and then re-sculpt every single you know the the, the details it's annoying I, the only thing I can do is I can fix this make it into a closed uh, sword just to using green, use green stuff to uh, fill the top bit on the edge of the blade I, 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 can, I can do that I can fix that but it's gonna be closed sword anyway and then it's the face um, the, the face is just completely blurred out there is no detail at all uh, and also you can probably tell that the, the connection between the head and the neck is a little bit too much too thick if you can cut this bit out I believe it's still fine but again it, it, it requires quite some work and then the left hand there is just in your way and it's just not easy task um, again they try to make it uh, with open mouth but then the, I believe the, the, they feel like they, they can because the difficulty of putting them out of the mode, mode so they just make it 
a shot mouse, but then it's still an open the design. It's just uh, I don't know. I feel like they 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 could spend more time on this, fix the minis, um, and then the other thing is um, they made the top upper wings bigger than the lower wings, which they supposed to be the same size, I believe. Um, I don't know why, but um, it just feels weird. Um, because because Virgil's fine. Virgil's has you know the four wings identical size, but SDT Dante has his upper wings bigger than the lower wings. It feels that makes him feel like butterfly. Uh, just a weird, I don't know, a weird weird choice of making the lo lower wings smaller. Uh, I don't know. I might, I don't know, again, I might get used to it, but it's just a weird choice. I mean, why? I don't understand. And and this is officially licensed by Capcom. I, I, I don't understand why would Capcom approve this this design because I'm pretty damn sure the wings are identical size. This is, this is just too big compared to the lower wings. I mean, you can probably say it's not open yet, but even though, I don't know, it just feels weird. And this, this bugs me a lot, really, it just bugs me a lot. This bugs me even than the face. I mean, I can't I can, I can fix the face, but I can't, I can't re-sculpt entire wings. I mean, Virgil's fine, Virgil's absolutely fine. The, the wings of SDT Virgil is amazingly done. And uh, to be honest, I like this pose better than the original 3D render. The 3D re original 3D render was like you know open to the one side, to the to the right side, but this one feels like more uh, to the uh, end battle. Uh, you know when when mission 19, it was mission 19. So he uh, Virgil and Dante are just about to finish this, and then they change into devil trigger form about to you know killing each other and then the, the, the just I, I don't know why why did they decide to make the upper wings bigger I really don't understand I really don't understand but uh, uh, but anyway it's it's here it's here I can't really do anything about it I can't just risk off the whole wing I, I can't it's beyond my limit <laughs> but other than that the the chest, the skin, all those designs on his body looks absolutely fine. It's mainly the head, the sword, and the wings are the the, the issue. Oh, one more thing. Uh, on his left hand, you can probably tell the the, the hand is, um, well, see, the long nails are gone, which I do appreciate that. I don't like the long nails to be honest, but. Uh, Anyway, the wings, they bugs me a lot. They bugs me a lot, a lot. Ah, well, anyway, this is the uh, Devil May Cry the Bloody Palace board game made by Steamforge Games, and I have to say, uh, damn alarm. And I have to say, it turns out a great product. I mean, even with all those flaws, even with the stupid insert, all those weird uh mini designs and uh you know constantly moving damage tokens and it's still perfect game for me at least and i do believe it's a 10 out of 10 game for both dmc fans and board gamers and if you know nothing about dmc it's still like 87 points out of 10 a strategy game um it's really fast paced, no dice, purely card driven, and then fancy miniatures. I mean, one or two may have some flaws, but overall, amazing quality, literally. Big thumbs up on SFG's time. And that's me fixing the Dante. And uh, you can tell I've been doing a lot. I uh, fixed the boots, uh, the hair, the left shoulder, uh, filling all the gaps. And then, um, yeah, I spent quite a lot of time on that. And then uh, I give extra green stuff on the handle a little bit. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.